What's good? It's another Johnny C. Sora video. Ronald Keith Jefferson topics. As five perfect and unblemished red heifers arrive in Israel, just how close is Israel to building the temple that will be the house of the Antichrist? Oh my God. I know that's right. They need to just leave that alone because... <laughs> As long as that temple's not built, we, ain't, we really don't have to worry about no beast coming. Because that, that temple is pivotal to him becoming God on earth, the, um, the Antichrist. This is from now the begin, the end begins com. What you are seeing are vain attempts by people to build a temple of God, while at the same time rejecting the revelation of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who simple it actually will be. I, who sim I know that's right because these Jews, I'm not going to shit on the Jews. I love the Jews. Jesus was a Jew. Paul was a very jealous. He was once a Pharisee named Saul who used to destroy the church, but then he became a, a, a Christian. He wrote a third of the New Testament. All the Hebrews, Galatians, Colossians, those are letters from Paul, not some... Um, some some author we don't know, like the Muslims say, with their heretic religion. I had to get on a couple of Muslims a couple of weeks ago on on on, you, on YouTube. What the what, what, like you know what I don't, you know what I like about Muslims, bro? They be reading our manuscript, looking for contradictions. We don't even read their faith. We don't read the Quran. We don't believe in Muhammad. Muhammad's a heretic, and um. Allah's a fallen angel that's worshipped as a God, a so-called God. He is not Jesus. He is not the Father. He is not the Holy Spirit. He doesn't even have, he, he doesn't even have a direct connection to his um, followers, Muslims. He's not their father. He's their master. And who's the master? Um, Jesus is the Lord. The devil is the master. The Temple Institute wrote on Thursday, September 15, 2022, 5 p.m., five perfect unblemished red heifers arrived in Israel from the USA. A modest ceremony was held at the unloading bay of the cargo terminal at Ben Gurion Airport, where the new arrivals were greeted and speeches were made by their credible people who have put their hearts and souls and means to making this historic prophetic day become a reality. Let me ask you, Christian, what about this excites you? <clears throat> it's a rhetorical question, so please hold your answer to the end of the article. This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein there is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. What is that? That's Numbers 19, 2. Quick, what did the first temple built by Solomon and the second temple built by Zerubbabel both have in common? If you guess, they are both recorded in the scripture. You will be 100% correct. Now think, even though the Bible shows you the rebuilt temple at the end times, it does not show you the biblical command for it to be built. Ask yourself, whose temple shall it be? And what, what do the five red heifers just exported to Israel have to do with this? Plenty. And there was given me a rod unto a, a, a reed, right, like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. When ye, shall, shall, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, Whoever so readeth, let him understand. Matthew twenty four fifteen, and the prior verse was Revelation chapter eleven verses one and two. Now you would think that since John calls it the temple of God, that the, this third choice temple is indeed God's temple. But we read no command in the Bible given for its construction to begin, and we do know for sure that Antichrist himself will go into the holy place. And demand that his Isaiah 14 dream be fulfilled. Luke 21 records that Jerusalem will be destroyed by the armies of Antichrist. And by the end of the tribulation, the third temple will likely not be standing. And you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. Then know that the desolation therefore is nigh.
the clue to figuring out all this all this out is found in Isaiah 28. And it shows Israel in a time of Jacob's trouble with no king. Just a bunch of godless people trying their best to create create an Israel and Jerusalem that does not include God. And that's what the Jews do. It, it's very sad that, you know, that first off, let's talk about the most blessed person on earth, the Messianic Jew. That is the Jew that believes that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, like Peter and James and John and Luke and Matthew. They were all Jews who believe in Jesus being the Messiah. They are all Messianic Jews. The most they, the Bible says first the Gentile will be rewarded. First the um, Jew will be rewarded and punished. Then the Gentile will be rewarded and punished. This is exactly what we are seeing with the breeding of the red heifers. Attempts by Jesus Christ rejecting people to bring the king bring in the kingdom that can only and will only be bought in by the King of Kings. What do you think God thinks when he looks down on people who reject his only begotten son, trying in their flesh to build him a house? I know the Lord's not with the Jews. Do you really think that God would ever accept red heifers bred in America and flown over to Israel? Is that how you imagine God working to, to build his house? Paul gives us a valuable insight. Second Thessalonians 2, where he shows us God, Satan, and the temple of God, all janitor to one tiny but explosive verse. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And that verse right there should let you know, do not rebuild the temple. That should be one thing Christians should be working for. Every time you talk about building that temple, do not build that temple, please. Please don't rebuild that temple. I understand we want God to have a home on earth, but he's in every Christian on earth. We are the vessels of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? We are his church. We are his body on earth. Every person that confessed Jesus Christ came in the flesh, did those miracles, died for the sins of mankind, and loves their neighbor as they love themselves, they will go to heaven. See what Paul says. Paul says that the Antichrist will be called God with a capital G. And this, and that his temple will be called the temple of God, as he shows himself to be God. But what is really, but what is it really? What is, what, why is, why? It's the strong delusion sent upon all those who rejected the gospel of Christ and were left behind after the catching away of the church. And for this cause, God shall send the strong delusion that they should believe a lie. I've went under that before. Well, I've talked about it in my vlogs about the strong delusion. I've went through that personally. And um, I was kind of dragged to hell, became a devil worshiper for a minute, or oh, actually a witch that had Satan as his God for about six months, man. Until I actually had to go get institutionalized. And once I told them what I was going through, they said I was schizophrenic. So that's what it's been since um, December of 2010. If you want, if you want to be get excited about the five red heifers, as many on social media right now are, then be a good Bible believer and get excited for the right reasons. Get excited because all this man-centered action for rebuilding the temple in the flesh by human efforts shows you conclusively that the prophets are right, that the apostles are right, and the scripture of truth will never let you down. If that temple somehow gets built before the rapture of the church. I wouldn't go into a hundred miles of it. It's being built for Antichrist to fulfill prophecy. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father. Luke verse 32. Luke ver chapter 1 verse 32. There will be no temple of God until he returns as king in Revelation 19. In the meantime, pray for your precious Jewish souls to receive Christ as Savior and get saved. And pray for Israel as she prepares, however, unwittingly to go through Jacob's trouble. Get excited about that. We're going to end it at that. What do you think about this? This is now the end begins dot com. <clears throat> you know, Jesus Christ was the last blood offering. That's why he had his blood shed. The, the Old Testament was all about blood, remit, bl the shedding of blood for remissions of sins, doves oxen, all type. You know, you couldn't give a deformed or um. The defect animal as a sacrifice to God. That would be, a, a, I don't know if it would be an abomination. That's deep. 
but it would be something that God would count against you for bringing one of your defective um, animals as a sacrifice to God. But Jesus Christ was the last blood sacrifice. That's why there's no sacrifice in, in the New Testament because he died to end all that. You know what I'm saying? So what do y'all think? They, they want the third temple back. And we know that the, that that that's the Antichrist dream. You know what I'm saying? But I think we got a long ways to go. You know, we, we're not in the, we're not into the new world order yet. We're under the reign of the ten kings, the ten horns, prophesied in Daniel. We're not, uh, the feet of the statue of Nebuchadnezzar, the, uh, mixed with iron and miry clay. So, I want to end it on that note. It's been ten minutes. Microwave generation, I don't want to keep you too long. This is Ronald Jefferson, Johnny C. Sir. I love you. My son is here right now. That's that tapping you hear. He's playing video games. So I'll hit you up later. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>